Hello, everyone, and welcome to Pathfinder Live here at Gen Con Online. Hi, everybody. Hey! Hey! Why, hello. Hi. Hello, hello, hello. Uh, I am your host for this uh, delightful adventure of terrible miscreants. I am Jason Bullman. I am the director of game design at Paizo uh, and uh, the creator of the Pathfinder role playing game. And before we get started here today, I want to toss it around the horn and let the members of the Thunder Company uh, introduce themselves. We'll start with you, Eric. Oh, uh, I'm Eric Mona. I am the publisher and chief creative officer at Paizo. And tonight I will be playing Arkanith Thevereth, the high priest of Abadar. Well, actually not the high priest, actually the second assistant to the third social secretary of the Absalom Temple of Abadar. But he's ambitious. <laughs> <laughs> all right uh let's see let's hop over to uh let's go grant all right i'm grant Berger, member of the glass cannon podcast and i am playing nero good fence brutalizer bloodwing wizened ward of wendell the wondrous weasel and the one without a memorable gimmick so i've started um <laughs> crocheting since the last time i am now the scintillating seamstress of the galarian whatever the fuck i don't know i'm sorry for cursing <laughs> well there was our one all right uh next up joe <laughs> oh grant so hard to follow just so hard to follow with that potty mouth uh, hi, everybody. I'm Joe O'Brien, also from the Glass Cannon Network, and uh, very excited to be here playing with Jason and Eric, uh, a true honor. And I am going to be playing uh, a truly, uh, truly intense individual, uh, a, a man who spends his days hunting the world's most dangerous game, man. Or oh, halflings, halflings <laughs> and uh, uh, a, a bounty hunter of the northern uh, of the northern wastes. Hawk, Raven, Eagle, Crow. <laughs> yes, very good. All right, uh, Matthew, you're up next. Hi, everybody. I'm Matthew Capodacasa, also of the Glass Cannon Network. And today I will be playing the Dwarven Barbarian, Pima Shale Slider, who is just here and just wants to make sure everyone has a good and safe and wonderful time on the stream. Thank you. She doesn't sound like a barbarian at all. <laughs> no, I'm working on that. <laughs> doing a lot of doing a lot of self-reflection and journaling uh, we'll see very good all right next up troy hi i'm troy lavalley from the glass cannon network and uh, i'm gonna play a guy that i don't get to play that often because sometimes i gm some of these sessions instead of jason so um uh, bring it back me. <laughs> jason, right. leave jason out of this i don't want to play uh i'm playing chase cunningham he is uh a liberator uh uh, champion of Saren Ray. Uh, he's a half orc, which a lot of people don't know because he was raised by humans, uh, and uh, they're very rich because they uh, they supply glue all over Galarian. <laughs> <laughs> they are the leading suppliers of of horse glue, of of horse glue and horse accessories. <laughs> all right. the best. <laughs> and last but not least, Skid. Hello, I'm Skid Mar of the Glass Cannon Podcast Network. Welcome to all the Glass Cannon Nationals. And I'll be playing Ecthelion, son of Egnor, up until very recently, called Orphan Puncher. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> indeed. <laughs> all right, so to kick things off here, uh, I'm going to uh, uh, get things started. So when we last left our intrepid band of adventurers. For many years now, the Thunder Company has made a name for itself in the northern reaches of Avistan. Starting off conquering the Bloodsworn Vale, these heroes have taken part in many of the events that have shaped the world of today. Why, just last year, they attended the coronation of Ostog the Unslain, and it was during this very festival that their names came to be known by the folk all across the land. Amyanir, a fae princess came to the festival to claim Ostog, the Unslain, as her husband, plucking his soul from his body. Oh, by the way, spoilers for our uh, game from last year. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, the, the, the mighty Thunder Company embarked on an epic quest to retrieve the lost king before he was to be wed and lost forever to the capricious fae. 
Their quest led them to consult with the Norn in the Midnight Court, to treat with a mischievous crow, and finally to uh, uh, venture into tor the treacherous Torment's Thicket, where they braved countless curses to speak with Bolero, the bleak soul at the heart of the wood. Rooted there for killing his brother Domeran, uh, only he knew where the wedding would take place, for it was the place he would never visit, Nithvale, the city of the Fae. His knowledge in hand, the, the PCs traveled to Nithvale to stop the ceremony. Arriving just in time, our heroes objected to the services, bringing them to a halt. But the queen must be wed, and someone would have to take Ostog's place. It was then, under the roots of the mighty tree, that the Thunder Company convinced Amyanir to marry her long-lost love, Damaran, who had been traveling with them all this time in the form of one mischievous crow. At least that was one of their many, many exploits. <laughs> that was one year ago. Today, the Thunder Company is enjoying some long-deserved rest in a small roadside inn just outside Riddleport. They spent the evening drinking and enjoying merriment late into the night, enjoying body songs and lengthy toasts between the, the group of you and the only other uh, uh, resident who was staying at the inn, a mysterious stranger with a rather huge grin wearing a black and gray striped top hat. As the evening spun away into a blur, the mysterious stranger seemed to be dancing between the tables with a long pole uh, slung over his shoulders on which hung a variety of cages. But as each of you uh, had a cage placed in front of you, you dozed off as if some sorcery had overtaken you. In the morning, you wake up in your bed. All seems normal. And that is where we will begin. Wait, wait, tell me more about this pole dancing cage party. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we glossed over that. Like, I know. It's <laughs> pretty early. It's not actually happening. Wait, it was a pole dancing or cage dancing pole party? I could, I, I was unclear. <laughs> I was drinking too much. <laughs> so, uh, uh, we are going to start off with uh, uh, Hawk Raven. You, uh, you wake up in your room. Uh, you are uh, in the room of this uh, fine inn, which is called the Boar's Lament. And, uh, uh, yeah, you uh, wake up, and uh, your head's a bit sore from all the drink. Um, oh. And, uh, you know, all of your stuff's piled up neatly over in the corner, and uh, apparently you just wandered off to bed and uh, uh, have passed out. Okay. Yeah. Um... I'll, uh, I'll, I'll get up, make sure all my stuff is there, first of all. Uh, sure. I don't leave anything valuable behind. I am carrying around a fortune worth of magical items. <laughs> and so probably not the best idea to get wasted and then black out at the end of the night. Well, yeah, uh, fair enough. Uh, so you, you secure that all of your things are there and uh, are able to, uh, uh, you know, get yourself up. And you're, you're hungry. It's been, a, it's been a long night. And, mm. uh, and uh, yeah. So, what do you do? I need something to eat. All how right. Can I, how can I get this accomplished? My head's All not right. working. Well, uh, you wander out of your room to make your way into the main room of the inn. So feel free to move yourself in there. Um, uh, when you... Uh, oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, you should be on the map now. Yep. All right. So uh, I'll make my way out of the room. This map sure. is awesome. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Where do you get these maps, Jason? Yeah, <laughs> I get one of these on, from myself. A local street vendor. Uh, oh, 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 thank you for the generous plug, everyone. Uh, these, uh, these are my uh, blue map tiles. You can find them on the Roll Twenty store. So uh, you make your way out into the room of the tavern, and oh. uh, you see the feast from last night still arrayed out on the table. It has all grown cold. I should note of the uh, innkeep, there is actually no sign. You do not see her. Um, she does not appear to be here. And in fact, you appear to be all alone. Uh, there are these cages, though. There are, uh, uh, let's see, there's four of them arrayed around the room, uh, sitting, uh, you know, in front of, next to the chairs, on the table, um, up at the bar, you know. But they're empty. They're just tiny little wooden cages. Where is everybody? Uh, at this moment, uh, Pima, you wake up. Uh, um, oh. <laughs> oh. Uh, okay. And uh, also hungry, she will step out 
of her room and out into the foyer. All right. You step out into the foyer, and there across the room from you, you see a rather curious sight. Walking around the room is some strange bird man. Um, hi there. Who <laughs> are you? Hawk Raven, yeah. coming out of Pima's room, you see a, uh, well, to be honest, a giant humanoid rat. <laughs> what? Who are you? Do, am I armed? Did I grab my weaponry, or did I? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, and and as you reach down for your hand, you look down at your hand, and it's it's a it's a like a raven's hand. Oh, the, oh. He starts looking around. It's it's me, Hawk Raven. But I don't, <laughs> I don't. I know, I know. It sounds weird to say that I'm, I'm Hawk Raven, and and it's not me. But this is not me. <laughs> you, you, you're a bird. Yes. <laughs> In some ways, I've always been a bird. But it seems you like now I birds. actually am four yeah, birds, not... but now I'm just one. <laughs> what is happening? He what? looks around. Is this a dream? Am I dreaming? Does he get the sense of like that sense of detachment from like a dream, or does it just feel very grounded in reality? It, you know, everything feels real, right? You reach out and touch things, and they, you know, although your your skin is oddly like leathery and 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 rough because you know you've got like bird talons and everything. And and now that you think about it, from your own eyes, you can see a beak, uh, because, uh, yeah, uh, um, <laughs> you are you are apparently in the body of a tengu. <laughs> man <laughs> so now, yeah he, he yeah he'll immediately try to find a reflective surface like yeah. scrambling over dirty dishes now, now at the same time look at Tuna, it. you uh you have a snout as well um and there are little whiskers coming off the end of it because well you appear to be a fur covered rat folk um this is just a question uh <laughs> do I Am I changed to Rat, your tone of voice is remarkably similar to Pima. Oh, I Arconis, am Pima. Arconis, at this point in time, you wake up and uh, uh, begin putting yourself together. Although when you hop out of bed, you notice something odd almost immediately. The bed is way too tall. <laughs> My uh, internal monologue goes and I say, well, how strange! I wonder, have I shrunk? And then I'm going to look down at my feet, dangling off the edge of the bed like a little toddler, sort of just shaking cartoon <laughs> style. They and are. Are they, they are shorter? Clawed. Yeah, but the, the, you, your your feet have claws on them and are covered in scales. <gasps> I hold out my hands before my eyes, my beautiful manicured hands that I paid <laughs> not three days before this trip to have a full <laughs> pedicure manicure procedure. And I look at my hands and, and what do I see? I see claws? Wretched, ruined claws. <laughs> I, although he cannot see it, his face just contorts in like, horror and pain appearances everything to Arconis Severus <laughs> cleric of the god of cities and business and culture and he looks down at his claws and in sheer horror overtakes his face but then he turns his hands over and he realizes that those claws have hands attached to them and those hands have scales attached to them and those scales glisten like gold and a smile comes over Arconis Severus's face. And he says, Yes! <laughs> and he leaps out of bed. And he goes to look in the little mirror on the wall. And what does he see? Well, I'm afraid you appear to be in the body of a kobold? Oh, no! Oh! A gold kobold! Oh! Oh! Uh, he, he's excited. This is surely a sign of wealth. A miracle. But he, he's got one thing he knows. Arconis Severus has a little bit of a scar on his uh, right index finger, uh, or left index finger, where he was cut by a flying glass and a bar brawl on the journey toward the Hidden Valley Ranch. Oh, and, yeah. uh, <laughs> and, and and although his hand is now a clawed kobold hand, is the little scar still there? Nowhere to be seen. 
Uh, now it's weird. <laughs> At the same time, Exelion, you wake up as well, stumbling out of bed. Um, you almost trip over a tail. <laughs> so Ecthelion wakes up and almost trips over this thing, and he looks down in shock. Says, "Oh my god!" And then he, <laughs> "Oh my god! What is happening to me?" <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god! And he goes and over <laughs> and looks in a mirror. What is so there, there isn't a mirror, but there is a uh, atop the uh, chest uh, right near you. There is a uh, bowl of water that you can get a reflection in. And uh, when you look into it, you see the face of a feline. Oh no! <laughs> no, how did I turn into a cat? Oh my god. No. That's like the last <laughs> thing I wanted to be. <laughs> so he dejectedly opens the door and comes outside and says, hey guys. Hello, uh, cat. Feel, feel free to move your token out. I'm not going to swap your tokens. I'm going to leave those as your characters just because you know what they look like. Um, but, yeah. Uh, uh, a cat folk comes out of one of the rooms. <laughs> And the voice of Exelion <laughs> issues forth from it. Guys, don't be afraid. I'm totally turned into a cat. <laughs> I think something weird happened to me last night, guys. <laughs> something. Oh, and by the way, meow. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes over behind the bar and just starts rooting around for milk. <laughs> <laughs> well, funny enough, the bar, the, the bar cat is back there taking a nap uh, and uh, looks up to you and then just kind of comes over and rubs against your leg. <laughs> Pimma retreats to the far corner of the room. Because <laughs> <laughs> now there are not one, but two cats that she smells. By the way, she's an extremely long snout for a rat, and she's like, <laughs> Oh, fair. <laughs> Arconis, are you making your way out of the room? Uh, yes! Oh, yes! Um, I open the door and come out. And, Very good. uh, I try to gauge the mood of the room real quick. Are people <laughs> seeming excited? Or are they... What do they look like? Oh my god, one's a, a bird and one's a cat? Yeah, you just see a Tengu with a longbow fully drawn and arrow pointed at the back of the cat's head. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> freaking out. <laughs> Has anyone... Seen my friend? <laughs> you startle him and the arrow goes off. <laughs> Into God. the wood just past <laughs> Who are you? Why did you do that? That's so mean. Oh, uh, um, Jason, is my like sleeping shirt dragging behind me like a train on a wedding dress at this point? Have my clothes resized? Uh, your clothes are apparently missing. The clothes you were wearing last night are missing. Um, oh. I would I would say this. Uh, you were all in this tavern. All of your gear and stuff was stowed in your room, so you were just wearing your clothing. Um, so all of your weapons and gear and stuff, that's still that was in your room. But uh -huh. the clothing you were wearing last night is gone, and your characters are now wearing different clothing. Uh, ooh, and it's uh, like weird rags and. I'd like to make a fashion lore check to self-evaluate the clothes that I have been left with. Uh, yeah, go right ahead. Yeah, I got a... It's uh, fitting that our first check be a fashion lore. <laughs> I got a 13, Jason. It does not even take uh, the smallest bit of skill to realize that what you are wearing is essentially trash. Oh, it's oh, hideous! No. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. Who do we have left here? Uh... Nero, you wake up. Nero wakes up, raising his head from an immaculately crocheted pillow. <laughs> Thinks to himself, no matter what dangers face me this day, I am not afraid, for I am the most beloved member of the Thunder Company. The one everyone <laughs> talks about. <laughs> the one most memorable. with the greatest backstory. <laughs> the one who would truly become king. <laughs> and These are his daily affirmations. Uh -huh. <laughs> and uh, he looks down, uh, and he's still wearing again just the laciest pair 
of sorcerer's robes you've ever seen. Handmade <laughs> with the no, finest. <laughs> no? Oh, then no. he's freaked out because he paid a lot of money on the finest Avastanian yarn he could as find. You, as you look down, you see leaves. <gasps> oh. Leaves. And <laughs> you're here. wearing a vest of leaves. A vest oh. of leaves. Do I see any fungus, Jason? Work with me here. Uh, well, you look down at your fingers and hands. They they look like they might be made out of fungus. Oh, no. oh my god. And he looks into the mirror and across from him, he sees arachnid-like eyes, eight of them. What? Oh, what? <laughs> growing out of what appears to be a toadstool's head. He kind of looks like a clicker <laughs> from The Last of Us. What? <laughs> Where are you? And he stumbles out of his room and goes, Hello. <laughs> <laughs> you hear poof, and there's just like a brief puff, and then you just see a, a puff of feathers fall to the ground, and Hawkraven's gone. He hey, hey, <laughs> runs hey, out of the room. A walking mushroom just came out of the room. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. And the eight what eyes all blink. What creature are you? All eight of the eyes blink at like a different times. So it's like really disconcerted <laughs> to, to look at him. And he says, I'm Nero Goodfellas. <laughs> oh god. And then he looks down. <laughs> oh my god, what have they done to my beautiful body? <laughs> oh. oh my god, Nero, you turned into some kind of mushroom man or something. Grody. Uh, <laughs> Maybe someone should lick me and see what happens. Oh, gross. Ah. Maybe a spoon. <laughs> Maybe. Um, what happened last night? What's the last thing you remember? Who was that pole dancing cage man? I don't know. It's really enjoying the pole dancing with the cages. And then all of a sudden, it was as if I fell into a mystical sleep. And now here I am, and I have a different voice and a tail. I have the same memory, but my voice is the same. Thank God. I remember someone saying, let's get a second round. And then I cast Sanctuary on myself out of precaution and went to bed. So I didn't even drink. So Not more than once. And at that moment, out in the stables outside. <laughs> 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 Chase so Cunningham wakes up <laughs> from a pile of hay. <laughs> Unsteady at first. There's some form slumped over in the hay next to you. You must have had a good night. Chase you get up, up and yeah. Any uh, like these aren't the six hundred thread count linens I fell asleep on. <laughs> let's no? see who. Let's see who the lucky filly is, though. <laughs> He looked over at the uh, lump lying next to him. So uh, you uh, you look over at the form laying next to you, and you see the body of Chase Cunningham. <gasps> what, what fresh new hell is this? <laughs> yeah, and you reach out to turn the body over with your hoof. <gasps> so I go to reach for myself. And it's just a hoof. Yeah, it's a hoof. <laughs> what is happening? And as you touch it, Chase <laughs> kind of gets up and is like on his fours and starts running around on all fours. Whoa, whoa, <laughs> whoa there, boy, whoa. Call me a self. Wait, is that you? Is that you? He bought a, uh, he's he came here on a... <laughs> he came here, he's, he's really confused because he came here on a brand new horse he got while vacationing uh, Yes, a, a young pony Kadira. that you had been hoping to break in, yes. Yes, its name is Ad Hasif. He got mm. it in Katira. Um, and so he's like, Ad, Ad Hasif! Calm down! What, what is going on? And he's like, Chase, Chase Am I again a... suddenly stops and stares at you. Ad? Is that you, boy? <laughs> It is I, Chase, but it seems as if we have swapped bodies. Hold on! And he looks down at his genitals. 
Sarah may be praised, not everything has changed. <laughs> you uh, look down and you are in the body of a pony. My God. I'm gorgeous. <laughs> ah, do you take care of that form? I must go find my friends and say, what the hell happened here? He promptly walks over to the pile of hay and begins eating it. <laughs> That's a good nod. Good. <laughs> I'll be right back. And then he just canters. Feel free to move the pony token there. Uh, <laughs> That's you. Uh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> pony comes bursting through the door. <laughs> Boo! <laughs> Hawk Raven turns. He's like, Chase. <laughs> it is I, Chase Cunningham. Oh my god, he turned into a pony. The pony appears to be able to talk, and Chase's voice is coming out of it. The now, thickens. as you are all standing there, you're, you're, you're kind of looking at each other, and uh, you realize that you're here all by yourself. You see no sign of the innkeep. You see no sign of the uh, uh, mysterious stranger. And... As you are uh, standing here looking at each other, you notice that down here there is this uh, mounted uh, dragon head on the wall. And quite suddenly, it um, detaches. It, it moves. It suddenly comes out of the wall. And as it does, the wall behind it simply disintegrates um, and breaks Whoa. apart. One too many. All right, that's fine. Uh, breaks apart and shatters. Um, and as that happens, the... Oops, the wrong piece here. Got to make sure I'm the right as that occurs, the dragon head suddenly sprouts another head next to it, and then another, and then a body. And quite suddenly, whoa, the dragon head transforms into a chimera. Oh, 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 true nightmare. And at that point, everybody, no. I'm going to need folks to roll initiative. Oh, Billy oh, Anthony's oh going to talk to us. Welcome to my inn. Did you enjoy my pole dancing? <laughs> Did you enjoy <laughs> my Mara? pole dancing? <laughs> oh, oh, God, right out of the gate, Jason. Oh, oh yes. yes. It occurs to me that because you're not actually rolling stats in roll 20, I can't use the roll 20 initiative system. All right. So. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you could input the numbers, I think, individually. Yeah, I could. Um, Question. Can I use a ride check for initiative? <laughs> <laughs> Run it out there. No, because you're not riding anything. You are the ride. How dare you? <laughs> Go ahead. It's people like you that give equines a bad name. <laughs> is, um, it's people like you. Oh, never mind. I do. Uh, this is wild, man. I had no idea that uh, we'd be looking at like six bestial creatures. <laughs> this is crazy. Oh, yeah, everyone. I didn't tell them what I was doing. I just told them that they were in different bodies. All right. Um, and told each one of them separately. Oh, All no. right. So can I get everyone to roll a perception for initiative, please? Yes, I'm good. Let me know when you're ready. Uh, uh, yeah, one at a time. Joe, what do you got? Uh, I got a 29. Ooh. I also got a 29. Whoa. Uh, which one of you wants to go first? Oh, Pima, you go first. Okay. <laughs> I don't have any weapons. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Grant, what do you got? 31. Ooh. All right. Uh, Skid, what do you got? 17. Oh, boy. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's a number. All right. Troy, what do you have? 15. Come 15, on. A, I know. A, a mighty equine initiative, if I've ever heard one. And last but not least, Eric, what do you got? 35. Whoa. Wow. Yes. Well done. Thank you. 
I thought we were rolling first edition initiatives. That's why I threw out a 15. So. <laughs> That's cool. Uh, all right. So, uh, let's see. Top of the order is Eric. Um, you are getting to go first. What would you like to do? Hmm. This thing does not look like it's here to uh, negotiate. Yeah, it does not look very friendly. Let's see. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. Would you say I'm within 30 feet of that uh, guy? Or do I need to move? In fact, you are 25 feet away. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. So yeah. I'm going to cast a spell on the Chimera. Okay. And uh, I'm going to wave my clawed hands and speak some words in the draconic tongue. Right. And uh, and then follow up those magical words with words, you know, in common. And I'm going to say, uh, you, Chimera, you call yourself part dragon. I say you're part goat. You're more goat than dragon. And I cast uh, this awesome new spell called Crisis of Faith on it. Oh, no. That <laughs> yeah. sounds good. So it's one creature uh, within 30 feet. It's a, a DC 25 will save. And uh, I assault the target's faith, riddling the creature with doubt and mental turmoil that will deal damage depending on its save. All right. So here comes my will save. You're a goat. Ah, no dragon at all. <laughs> I got a 32, which I believe is going to be a success. That's a success. So you'll take half damage. So you, you take right. 66 damage. Wait, can this thing cast spells? I assume not. No. Okay. Uh, you're going to take 7, 10, uh, 15, 16, 17. You take uh, 10 points of damage, mental damage. As you're just, as the Chimera's like, I really am not much of a dragon. This guy makes a good point. <laughs> <laughs> and since I have a little bit of an action left, I'm going to step behind the wall so I'm out of its view. Yeah. All right. Safety first. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. And it, it was good that you did so because it goes next. Yes. Oh, man. We had a 29, Pim. <laughs> we had a 29. Yeah. Yeah, it is. You're not up to snuff. Yeah. Um, all right. So the first thing it's going to do is, uh, let's see. I think we are going to go ahead. And the uh, red dragon head on this thing God, just things. unleashes. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, oh, that's no. awesome. Corner line. Cone line. Uh, it is a cone, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it is going to hit. Uh, let's see. That's going to hit. Uh, let's see. That's Pima. Uh, that's, that's Pima. Pim, sorry, Pima. <laughs> uh, Chase and Hawk Raven. I'm going to need all of you to make me a reflex saving throw. Come on, let's crit success this uh, one. Come on. Okay, uh, I roll a natty nineteen for a twenty-eight. Oh. There you Ooh. go. My horse-like reflexes <laughs> jump out of the way. Prances out of the way for 27. Oh, my gosh. Hey, I, I got a 26. Worst one of the bunch. Uh, well, a 26 is going to be a save. Did anybody get a 36? No. No. Oh, no, so no, no. Wow. You are going to take half damage from this. Here it comes. Oh, dear. <laughs> oh, my God. 36 points of damage divided into two, so you only take 18. Okay. Okay. Ouch. That's <laughs> not great. Uh, not and great. With it, that took up two points actions with its third action. Uh, it is going to, let's see, I think it's just going to advance on Hawkraven as it comes out of the wall and, and charges up toward you. But okay. that is going to be the end of its turn. Grant, you are up next. Uh, Nero is standing there with his hand on his staff of evocation, and even in the moment since it's been there, you can see like he takes his fingers off of it, and the fungus he's now composed off has started decomposing the wood. It's really creepy. Ugh. And uh, he takes the the time he has to uh, take a take a step as one of his actions, uh, immediately behind Hawk Raven Eagle Crow, and will uh, reach out and touch. Uh, well, actually, doesn't need to reach out and touch. Will uh, from across the room, 
uh, uh, ten feet away, cast haste onto Pima with his remaining two actions. Nice. All right. Ooh, sweet. Nice. So Amazing. That's going to give Pima uh, an extra action that can be spent on a move or a strike, if I recall correctly. Correct. Thank um, you. All right. So that is uh, Grant. That is the end of your turn, Matthew. It's up to you. Okay, feeling extra hasted, Pima will stride back to her room, which I'm guessing is gonna, might provoke if this thing has an attack of opportunity. Uh, uh, well, let me take a peek. Um, you know, it doesn't it doesn't have reach to get you. Oh, great. No. Uh, so first, the first action, uh, go uh, stride back to my room. Second action, pick up my plus one striking great pick. Uh, third action. Ooh. <laughs> back into the room, stride back in to get around to this side uh, of the Chimera, and fourth action, because of haste, I will uh, take a swing. All right. You needed those extra actions. I yeah. really did. Uh, that is a 25 to hit. Um, all right. So you go up to this thing and swing wildly at it with a 25 and miss. Oh, no. Oh, boy. oh dear. Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> Your turn. It is your uh, turn. Hawk Raven is going to, <laughs> acting on purely new instincts of his Tengu nature, he's going to bite this thing with a beak. <laughs> <laughs> he's just going to go ah! and try to stab at it with a beak. Uh, sure. Natural two. The oh. beak is very new to him. <laughs> yeah, uh, no, clearly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that's uh, an adjusted 17. I don't know if that... Uh, that's not a fumble, right? No, no. Um, and then uh, uh, seeing that that's not working, uh, he's going to, he's got his longbow, so he's just going to try to create some space and fire it. So he's going to back off. So he's going to move back, uh, back away, uh, away from this thing. Uh, I don't know if that provokes or, or if he could do an acrobatics. He's an acrobatic fellow. He's trained in it to avoid the AOO. Up to you. Uh... Let's see. Uh, yeah, you can make a check to attempt to avoid the uh, AOL. All right, I'll make a check to, uh, so that's a 16. As he tumbles back. Um, a 16 is not good enough. It attempts to bite you with its uh, lion jaws. Oh dear. Oh dear. <laughs> oh dear. I already took that fire damage. Jason! <laughs> Does an armor class 35 hit you? Uh, that is a crit. Oh, take, no. Take oh. 40. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> Come on. It's too bad you're not a kobold because you could cringe and avoid that damage. <laughs> he uh, stabbed him across the room. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what a jerk kobold. Yeah, what, really. Can I do a knowledge check here? Um, is there a relevant knowledge check? I mean, is it Arcana? Is that what it is? Uh, for this, yeah, Arcana would be would help you out. Uh, uh, yeah. Nature might help you out too. It does look like a kind of a beastie. Oh, and that, you know, being a master of nature, he's gonna uh, do a knowledge check on it uh, and just see if he can figure out a weakness to this thing. Right. Um, oh, there we go. Thirty-three nature. Um, well, you know that being up next to it is going to be very unhealthy. Um, okay. Because it does have three heads, it can tear into you with all of those. Um, fortunately, um, its its breath has been expended. It will be able to use it again eventually, but you're probably safe from that for at least a moment. Okay. The thing that you do suddenly realize, though, is that it doesn't have any weaknesses to speak of. There aren't any Achilles heel to this thing. It is okay. just a savage, savage beast. And that is the end of Joe's turn. Skip. Thank you. All right. So Ecthelion jumps on top of the counter here and down behind. Is that one move action to go over the counter and back behind it? Yes. Okay. Says, oh my God, guys, this is like the grodiest thing I've ever fought. I don't even want to put my paws on it. It's so gross. <laughs> <laughs> and he unleashes a flurry of blows. All right. Uh, first one is a 24 to hit, which I believe misses. Yes, that does Second miss. Second also misses. And with his third attack, it misses too. Oof. 
All right, then. Uh, yeah, you don't quite have a flank buddy just yet. Yeah. Um, so, uh, uh, Exelion hops over and Flurry punches at it, but does not manage to connect. Troy, bottom of the order, it is all up to you. Kind of flying lion dragon horse is this? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to need to jockey for position so that I can mount an attack against this stud. I'm going to regret this. All right, yeah. And then, <laughs> then he, after he got all that out, he uh, does three attacks. Yeah, uh, so the first one is a, it's just a hoof. He, like, stands up like an old boxer. <laughs> <laughs> smack him with a hoof. <laughs> How about you? Uh, 25 to hit. 25 does not hit. Run! <laughs> Run! I gallop out of there. <laughs> Uh, that doesn't hit. That is brutal. Uh, all right. Well, just for shits and giggles, I'll try it again to see if I can roll even higher. Sure. Uh, uh, that's a 27. Um, yeah, 27. Is that with, Still is with, that the, with the penalty? Yes, that's with the penalty. Attack? Yep. Mm -hmm. Hit. Okay. Your second hoof manages to connect. How much now? Now we know what we're dealing with. Nine points of bludgeoning. Ooh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Put it on its last legs. <laughs> Almost looks over. like my job is done here. And it then looks... he takes a guarded step behind the table. <laughs> <laughs> the pony. It looks, it looks fairly wounded. All right. Uh, we are back to the top of the order. Echthelion, I believe. No, sorry, not Echthelion. Arconis. Arconis Severus. All right. I take a single action to move 25 feet here. And the whole way I'm saying, did you not hear what I said about your poor draconic skills? Let me show you how a true dragon acts a gold dragon. <laughs> and I'm going to open my little kobold jaws and shoot out my own gout of flaming breath at the chimera, who probably what? has fire resistance, but F it! Ah! <laughs> and I blast out some gold dragon breath, that's and uh, that's hopefully going to hurt it. It's a, it's a mighty 4d4 points of damage. Not 44, but 44. It's a 30-foot <laughs> line, so it goes all the way to the far wall. Doesn't hit anybody else. Uh, DC 25 basic save, Jason. Uh, oh, 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 oh! That's... Uh, Almost max damage. Uh, Ooh, so, uh, I, I got uh, uh, 14, 14 points of damage. Well, it, uh, it manages to dodge a good portion of it, but it does take some of that damage. So uh, nice. it didn't critically make it, so it's only going to take, but it will take half. All right. Um, um, your blast of flame scorches it in spots, but it is still fighting. Uh, let's see. That would be it for Arconis. Uh, next up, it goes. The first thing it does is it turns its mighty jaws upon, uh, let's see. <laughs> you guys are dead. <laughs> dead. It turns its jaws on Ecthelion. No! <laughs> no! I love that this is your personification of a cat. This is what cats <laughs> talk like, guys. Seriously. The uh, <laughs> the jaws attempt to bite you. Uh, does a DC does a thirty five hit you? It does. Is that a crit? <laughs> that is a crit. That is uh, a crit. No. <laughs> so oh much no. Damage. Take fifty two. <laughs> oh my oh. god. What? <laughs> of which twenty is fire. <laughs> oh god. Oh. Oh, get me with a spoon, guys. <laughs> it really hurts. With its second action, it's going to, uh, with its lion jaws, it's going to attempt to bite, uh, let's see, Pima? Okay. Uh, but I rolled very poorly. That's only a uh, 17, so I'm wondering that's going to miss. That misses. Uh, and it will take its third action. It'll swing a claw at Pima as well. Oh. Nowhere nearby. All right. Uh, that is the end of its turn. Next up, Grant. Okay. Uh, seeing a dragon flame be unleashed onto this chimera and not having too terribly much of an effect, Nero will reach into his bag of trips, 
and in a direct line straight from where the creature emerged will cast lightning bolts. Yes. Oh my. Using two actions, uh, you have a reflex save for me to see if this three-headed beast can dodge any of the damage or perhaps negate it altogether. Uh, DC tw ah. 25. Uh, DC 25. All right, 20. Uh, uh, there it is. Oh my. I am <laughs> going to fail. Oh, yes. nice. Yes. Beautiful. Uh, Your uh, cast of lightning strikes true. The total amount of damage done is 28 points of electricity damage. There we go. There we go. Uh, and then straining from himself, you see as that happens, uh, <laughs> from every orifice on Nero, a seed just kind of pops out. <laughs> and one comes out kind of at at speed from his throat and shoots at the chimeras, one of its head's eyes, and let's see if that hits. What? <laughs> yep. That's a 30 to uh, hit. Oh, that will oh. hit. Okay. Oh, oh my god. Uh I believe Jason you made the perfect person a mushroom man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Obviously. <laughs> two points of non-lethal bludgeoning damage. All right. Well, that kind of bounces off its side, but it didn't look like it maybe left a bruise. Um, <laughs> all right. Uh, well, uh, Grant just was crazy and bizarre. Uh, uh, Matt, what do you got? <laughs> Matthew. Um, this has been a very traumatizing moment for me, and this is not happening! <laughs> First action will rage. All right. Uh, next action, this will be her hasted action, technically. She will take a step All right. uh, to flank the Chimera. Ah, very good, yeah. And then very I smart. will take two attacks uh, with a striking great pick. First attack. Uh, that is a 24 to hit. Ooh. A 24 is Flanking. a miss. Even, Even with the flank, yeah. <gasps> okay. Second attack. <laughs> yes. Uh, that is a miss as well. 19. Oh, right. so, uh, you, you fly into a rage and attempt to take it down, but I'm afraid you just don't manage to connect. Joe, it is your turn. What do you got for me? Hawk Raven is going to draw out his longbow. He's going to look for an opening on this creature. He's going to hunt prey. And then he's going to find that weakness and exploit it with two shots. All right. Lightning fast. Uh, he finds, even despite being in rare form as a Tengu, his, his hands are working rather nimbly across the bow and arrow. Here we go. First shot. Nope. That is a miss. 23. No, no, no. And no. second shot is a miss with a four oh, uh, 15. Yeah, terrible. We saw Terrible. We're at Dice to betray you this time, Thunder Company. <laughs> <laughs> they truly have. We, we've all been polymorphed. It's still understandable. Uh, yeah, we're getting used for new bodies. I'm all <laughs> <sorry. laughs> It's your awkward growing face. It's fine. Uh, kid. Okay, so he says, guys, seriously, this is like the most gnarly opponent we've ever fought. <laughs> and uh, only another flurry of blows. Uh, first attack. <laughs> Miss with a 20. Second attack. Miss with an 18. Close. Oh my god, this is terrible. You are adding bonuses to these dice, right? I, I am. <laughs> uh, I, I haven't rolled one under one 10, over 10. So actually, one more. So is the, la is the fourth attack, is that another? Is it additional minus four, or is it just the minimum no the 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 maximum uh, multiple attack penalty is two increments of whatever it is so okay. it's either eight or ten okay so one more attack and another miss for the point oh it's, de it's it's demoralizing but troy surely chase will save the day chase is trotted back to the corner of the room he just looks at everyone else. It's like, I don't mean to nag all of you, <laughs> but take off your blinders or we're all going to be unstable. 
<laughs> oh my god. I got a lot of time between rounds to come out. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, uh, it's obvious, yeah. And then I'll move back in with all hoof force. Come on. Got a plus 16 here. All right, you come running back in, and the dragon or the chimera attempts to. Uh... Oh, actually, no, sorry, I don't have reach. Never mind. Yeah, you're all good. Ah! Oh, God! Can I roll it again? No, 25. <laughs> I just missed. Oh, God. Oh. Where did you move to? I, I, I. It was more of a figure, figurative move. Yeah, no, I move right there. Right to, to the <laughs> flavor north. move. You, flavor you move. Sure? Yeah. Oh, because I could get Flanky McGee over here. I, I I'm just curious. Because <laughs> that, for example, would make uh, him uh, flat-footed against a 26. If that makes a difference. 25. Yeah. 25. Yeah. All yeah. right. Good. Thank you. <laughs> Let me show you how it's done. That was my one gift of benevolence this session. Enjoy. I appreciate it. I should have been paying attention. Uh, all right. It is going to be 11 points of damage. All right. And then I got one more attack. Low chance. You must be allergic to my horse fur. <laughs> Here we go. Not a thing. God, 23 against flat. Oh. 23 is not going to do it. No, not going to get the job done. We are back to the top of the order. Arconis. Oh, my friends, you all look, or many of you look injured. I... Arconis Gold Scales will call down the healing power of Abadar himself upon us all! And I use all three actions to do a healing burst. Uh, and as I do that, I say, This healing is for companions and dragons only! Chimera's not included! And I select <laughs> to dragon include... <laughs> Looks the sad. Chimera, uh, using <laughs> my, uh, whatever we call selective channel now, selective, yeah. Yeah. Uh, whatever, yeah, uh, and selective energy. And I heal everybody for, oh, nice, uh, 15 points. Hey. Oh, amazing. Oh. Thank you so much. Don't thank me. Thank Abadar. <laughs> That's it. Oh. <laughs> uh, so, uh, you have you have made the dragon head on the chimera particularly sad. Um, he feels entirely left out, and you are going to be receiving a sternly worded letter. But it's his turn, oh, and no. uh, the first thing he is going to do is oh, uh, we're going to go ahead and use three-headed strike since I've got three people right next to me, and I am going to attack with uh, the. Let's see. I'll take the jaw strike at uh, Chase. Come on. The highest attack bonus. <laughs> I just got healed for 15. Uh, that's a 21. 21, you say? Yeah, I rolled very poorly. I think that's going to be a big old miss. Yeah, I, I absorbed right. my armor into my body when I transformed <laughs> into the body of Ad Nassif. <laughs> the uh, lion jaws are going to strike out at Emma. Twenty-nine. Uh, because I am not wearing my armor and I'm not cheating like Troy, that is a critical hit. <laughs> oh! oh. The, lion, wow. the lion jaws grab hold of you and rip and tear, take 32 points of damage. <gasps> Ooh. Oh. Ooh. And last but not least, the ram is going to attempt to hit uh, Ekthelion uh, with a armor class of 33. Okay, that's a hit. Regular take, hit. Take 18 points of bludgeoning damage. Ooh, bludgeoning. Ow. No wonder <laughs> everyone hates me so much. This is what it feels like. And with my final action, because that was only two of my actions to attack with all three heads, uh, I'm going to take a claw swipe at... Well, let's throw it at Chase. Since I'm Come on. Uh, 22 is probably going to miss. Yeah, the cavalry is, is coming. <laughs> um, it snarls and bites, roars and snorts, and uh, that is the end of its turn. It is now Nero's turn. And Jason, I've never been quite clear on this. Can I spontaneously, as a sorcerer, heighten a second level spell to fourth if I have the slot available and expend one of those slots? If it is one of your, I believe it's uh, signature spells, the ones that you can heighten at will. 
but those are specific spells you have chosen. Right, and to this be is not ignition. one in that instance, so I will uh, spend two actions to uh, reach out to Pima and provide right. five points of fire resistance to her. Oh, um, all right. And then um, I'll, well, can I even shoot one more seed? Of, well, it's not going to even work. So I'll, I'll move into reposition. Uh, I will stride away towards the corner of the room to get a better shot at the Chimera for my next turn. All right. Um, you stride over there to get out of the way. All right, very good. Uh, oh boy. You were our only hope for damage. It's over. Yeah. We probably, we're all going to die. But at least <laughs> okay. Pima has fire resistance. All right. I have fire resistance, but I also have haste, so I get an extra attack, and I am raging, and I am going to swing away. Get it, baby. Finish it off. Get it. Uh, and open with a crit. Open Hopefully, strong. I'm just aiming to, to roll above a 10, which I have yet to do. <laughs> yeah, uh, me neither. No. Okay. Natural 20. Yeah! Oh! 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 Needed, well, that, that's going to do it. <laughs> needed that one. Okay, so my, my striking great pick is... <laughs> fate is <laughs> <laughs> this is a fatal striking great pick, so uh, my... Oh. D my D10s become D12s, and I oh, add yeah. an extra D12 to this roll. Oh. So just give me a minute to do the math. Oh, man. Take all the time you need. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> roll a couple of 11s on them D12s. Do it. Okay. It's only going to be 24 points of damage. Did you double it already? Uh, no. 48. Uh, there we are. Oh, my God. Yeah, no, that's, <laughs> that's, a, then... that's a bit more. That's a bit more. Yeah. Good. Okay. Um, your your pick slams right into like the base between two of the necks, and like arterial blood just sprays out. However, as you withdraw the pick and it begins to slump to the floor, one of its draconic claws slams into the floor and it stays standing. All right, second <sighs> attack. All right, come on, Pam, finish it off, Pam. Uh, thir Thirty-one. Bra bra 31 is going to hit. Nice. <laughs> come on, okay, come so on. that is 24 points of damage. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and you made me so angry, and I can really smell your blood. It's really unnerving me. Third attack. <laughs> it, is, it is barely hanging on by a thread. It is still I standing. I'm glad to hear that because I rolled a natural one. Oh, no. <laughs> you swing wildly oh, hoping to finish the beast, but do not manage to connect. Okay. Uh, oh, and then, Raven. Oh, I've got one more attack. Oh, you I'm, do. I'm hasted. Oh, hasty oh, hasted. Final strike. Him and narrows her eyes. Levels the pick. As if down in the mines. Back when she was just a simple miner. <laughs> I swear to God, natural 20. Yeah! yeah! Get out of here! Grandma, you're oh all over the my map. God. Amazing. A one followed by a 20, you bury this thing into one of the drag into the dragon's skull. Uh, that is 68 points of damage. Oh <laughs> my wow. lord. Wow. Fatality. All three heads pop off. No, it uh <laughs> It collapses to the floor. Yes, it's blood Pema. pooling out into <laughs> the floor of the tavern. And oh, quite man. suddenly, all has gone silent. You are left standing over the uh, the corpse of this uh, terrifying creature, um, wondering what is even going on here. Um... As Pima falls out of her rage. Um, what is even going on here? Pima, what are you again? I'm a rat folk, apparently. Oh, no. Oh, my God. I have the weirdest impulse to, like, jump on you and torment you for, like, 20 minutes and then eat you slowly. <laughs> is that weird? <laughs> it's, uh, it's no, I, I think that's pretty natural. I would Actually, Hawkrake like... of an Eagle Crow, too. That's so oh. weird. Stay away from me, cat. Okay, okay. Meow. <laughs> I know there's a lot of I know there's a lot of weird stuff going on, but that battle has given me quite a hunger. 
Would anyone mind hand feeding me an apple? <laughs> <laughs> Just put it right in my mouth. I won't bite. <laughs> Pima, who is your company cook, feeds you an apple. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Chase. Would you also like a carrot? No, no, I'm, I'll am be stuffed after I've swallowed the core. Chase, are you feeling okay? <laughs> to be honest, I've never felt better. It's weird. Like you I, look, you seem like you're a little hoarse. I, well, I'm, <clears throat> yes, my voice has taken a bit of a hit, <laughs> but... Uh, <laughs> this was all a mistake, everyone. I'm sorry. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Can I get everyone to make me a perception check, please? 28. Ooh, 27. 28. 18. 23. 30 for Hawkraven. Crap. 30. Garbage. 22. Um, everyone, uh, except for, I think, uh, the... Yeah, I think if you beat a 25, yeah, yeah, that's almost all of you. Um, you notice that uh, atop the uh, owlbear over in the corner, there is a crow. <gasps> oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no, guys, seriously. Oh, whoa. With a single there it is. feather. It's, oh. it's Domaran from the, from the wedding. Domaran. Back. The crow Back. looks to all of you. And says, have any of you seen the Thunder Company? Well, we are. That's a difficult question to answer. Do you mean literally? Well, I came here to bring them an invitation, but they can't seem to find them. Who are all of you? We're the Thunder Company. Bro, yeah, we're the Thunder Company. Yes, and if you don't believe me, my body is in the other room, possessed by a horse. Oh, really? Yes. Can Please. Well, that's... Is it don't... funny? Don't know. It's just, it's acting like a horse. Please don't do anything weird to it. <laughs> I intend on getting that back one day. <laughs> oh, well, that's truly strange. Hawkraven, is that you? Yes, it is me. You're looking very dapper. I've never felt better in my life. Hmm. Yes, it is nice having feathers. Wouldn't you agree? Yes. I can say now, truly, talking to you, bird to bird, I understand something. Can tangles fly? Do they ever get the ability to fly? Um, no, not really. Their wings are more vestigial. Um, yeah. 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 Okay. <clears throat> But you have hollow bones, so, you know, you glide a little. <laughs> yeah, well, I feel so light on my feet. <laughs> what brings you back, Crow? Why, I came to bring you all an invitation. You see, my anniversary is about to happen, and I wanted all of my friends to be there. But I brought them for you, and you, and you, and you, and you. Well, you don't really seem to be you. Yes, we've been taken by... Some foul pole dancing Cajun man. Perhaps we have evolved into more superior, more radiantly golden forms. It's possible. It's more likely dark sorcery. I oh, I, I, I'm still thinking it might be Abadar. Wait, but if Chase's body is out in the stables, where are our bodies? Oh, that's yeah. an excellent question. Oh. Wait, you weren't transformed? You're just in different bodies. I looked for a scar on my finger where that waiter cut me, and, and, and it's not there. I think we're different bodies. Have you ever seen the man with two brains? It's a lot like that. <laughs> oh, this is most disturbing. The invitations are for you, but if you are not you, then who is going to come to the anniversary? We can still come, as long as, along with... Meat or fish, oats is an option. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll be there in our finest clothes. Well, I'm not quite sure how that's going to work. You see, the invitations are not for these bodies, but for your others. That's just not how the rules work. Hmm. Well, so this, this is most another, troubling. This is just another party I'm going to be disinvited from. Oh, Pima. <laughs> 
<laughs> Pimmo, let the crew talk. Well, whoever took your bodies must be nearby. I would hope. Is it you? No, I just arrived. I came this morning, hoping to give you your invitations. Oh, for sure. Is I'm it so your wife? sure that it... Yeah. My Is it wife? Is your wife the one who messed with us last time? Well, Omnianir is is quite the, the gracious wife, and she holds you no ill will, despite the fact that you disrupted her previous wedding plans. She's well, we quite happy get... with me. Yes, we got her a much, much better husband than that barbaric brute. Well, I think so. I prune myself every day. <laughs> oh, <great. laughs> so, let me get this straight. You woke up this way this morning? Or is this happened a while ago no just now we woke up this way it happened at some point between when we went to sleep and when we woke up right. well that is most troublesome most troublesome indeed who would want your bodies huh mine well, I suggest down the you... stables I'd, I'd like to repeat that again mine is just over there I'd like to see that. That sounds pretty funny. Yes, All right, I'm hold going, on. I'm going to see what? it. Just hold on. And he goes in there and he comes back and the horse chase is on his back. He rides him in. <laughs> That's me, but not me. Is it just it's... like a saddle? Like, or is it sitting up? <laughs> it's I imagine like... Draped uh, over like a dead body? Horse chase, yeah. It's like a... <laughs> Like a sleep sack. <laughs> <laughs> looking, looking very bewildered. There I am. I bought that pony in Kadira. His name is Ad Hasif. But now we've switched bodies and, well, I don't know. I've killed more horses than I can remember. But I'm starting to gain a new respect for the form. Mm. Domarin looks at all of you and says, Oh, this is most troubling. Most troubling indeed. Someone has taken your bodies, and I cannot imagine for what purpose, other than the fact that our anniversary is coming up and your bodies were invited. Would this someone is most want troubling. To... Wait, do you, you should... have any reason to suspect someone would want to crash your anniversary party? Well, it is a it is a very special event, very limited. Not very many people will be in attendance, so I could imagine that there are any number of people who would want to get in. But I can't imagine why they would steal your bodies. Did they well, is... in the leaven our bodies? <laughs> <laughs> it appears that you are not you, and whoever it is was at least kind enough to leave you these spares. Oh no. Well, I don't know what you're waiting around here for. If you're going to catch your bodies, you best get going. Yes. I should look around here for clues. Mm, that's a good idea. Oh yeah, that's a great idea. I'm going oh, to yeah. go and take a look around. If you Maybe see... I'll see what's up. Okay. If you see someone with a with a, 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 a stripey stovepipe hat, um, maybe try to delay them a bit. Oh. Um, Did you say a striped stovepipe hat? Yes, it was quite unfashionable. Oh. Oh my. And on that, Domarin takes off. Uh, flying away from the uh, owlbear, uh, the stuffed owlbear in the corner, and takes off by wing, flying off through the uh, wrecked hole in the wall, uh, soaring out into the forest. Leaving the uh, group of you here, standing confused and unsure of what to do next. What do you yeah. do? That reaction is a little disconcerting. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, so Hawk Raven wants to case the joint for, uh, you know, any signs of foul play or, uh, tracks of some strange creature or, I don't know. Well, you can, you can give me a perception check if you want to just take a look around. Survival will help you look for tracks. Yeah, I'll start with survival. He's going to look right. for tracks, see if he can tell who came and went in the, in the wee hours last night. Uh, let's start with that. That is a 28. Um, so you begin looking around for tracks and first of all, on the inside of this inn, right? I mean, other than, you know, the occasional spilled drink or dropped morsel of food, the place is, you know, relatively clean, which means that it's really hard to make out anything in the way of tracks. Um, however, if you make your way outside at all, mm -hmm. um, 
you notice that uh, outside, you know, there's, you know, paved roads and whatnot right near here. But uh, uh, right nearby, there is uh, some some grassy areas. And you go take a look in there and you notice that there is like an entire group of footprints that goes making its way off into the forest. Hmm. Oh, my God. I Obvious. It's almost as if they weren't even covering their tracks. Um, so I'll let the group know. All right. Uh, off to the woods this way. This might can be I, where they went. Can I examine the cages? Yes, absolutely. Uh, give me a perception check. Uh, I should let you know that I, that because I'm a rat, I have and a long snout, a long snout rat. I have, I have a scent. I've been in the imprecise scent for the range of thirty feet. Ah, very good. But just in case that matters. About. All right. Uh, uh, so, yeah. So that is going to be a 32. So the thing that you notice is that each one of these cages, and there is, uh, there's four cages, um, and uh, you, you go up and smell the first one, and it smells oddly like a lizard. You go up to the second one, and it smells oddly like a cat. The next one smells strangely like a rat. And yet another smells like bird? Maybe maybe a crow? So, uh, these bodies were transported in the cages and our consciousnesses were imported into them. But these cages are so small. Indeed. There doesn't seem to be any other clue, though, with the cages. They just have kind of a smell of creature. They, you, they, you know, they have little bits of dung and whatnot in them as well. Hmm. Hmm. Perhaps this Good tall eye. dancing sorcerer brought his friends here and switched us out. Yes. How how small are the cages, Jason? Could a kobold fit in them or a rat? Oh no, they're 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 like okay. a few inches on the side. Okay. They're not very big. Oh. Like a goldfish bowl sized cage. Yeah, kind of. So your only real uh, uh, clue right now is the trail leading off into the woods. Yeah, and I'm going to ask a question on that, which is yeah. this is definitely going to be the first time I've ever asked this question in a Pathfinder game. Uh, are the tracks mine? <laughs> <laughs> like, do I recognize my own boots? Yes. <laughs> yes, you do. You do recognize right. your own boots. They, they walked our bodies right out of here. Oh, my God. I can't believe they stole our bodies and they made Although, them walk give me, out of the woods. Give me another uh, survival check. Uh, okay, another survival check. Natural one. <laughs> for Never mind. Him yeah. against 24. For a 16. The, the tracks are a bit of a mess. Uh, it's clear that there's another set of tracks in here, but you can't make out which is which. There's too many tracks here. Pima gets a 24 when she comes out to inspect them. Um, you take a peek around and you notice that there are these weird, slender, long boot prints. But they're clearly boot prints. Hmm. Was the man in the stovepipe hat wearing slender boots? You know, it's hard for you to remember. The, the night was pretty much a blur. Men who wear stovepipe hats tend to wear long, slender boots. I've heard, <laughs> I've heard that. I've it heard is that. known. It is uh, known. Fashion lore check, is that true? Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I got a Chase just says that under his breath. <laughs> yeah, yes, sure. Okay. Yes, let's go with that. Ooh, I knew it. Advice, yes. I never wear a court, this <laughs> All right, Pima is going, Pima the rat folk is going to don Pima the dwarf's armor as best she can. Yeah, you can, uh, for all of you that kind of change size, you can get your armor to fit. It's loose and a little rough, but it, it works. I would, uh, I, I'd, I'd like to take my, my big uh, chain shirt and my, my remnants of my good clothes, which now fit me like a dress, yes. over to uh, Nero. And I say, Nero, weren't you saying something about becoming a good seamstress? Absolutely. I'm one of the finest seamstresses you'll ever meet. Wow, could you take this in a bit? It's embarrassing to be wearing this so ill-fitting garment. Oh, yes, yes, one second. And he pulls out from, like, a gross fungus-encrusted pouch. He shakes it off so it doesn't freak uh, out oh, Arconis. Oh, uh, like oh. a, a tailor's tape measure and, and wraps around and does it. I'll have it ready in about an hour. 
And then he stands up to walk into his room to make the alterations. And as he does so, the enzymes that he has dumped on top of the dead Chimera's body that has decomposed half of it to nourish himself (laughs) slack away like uh, so much gum under a a shoe. (laughs) Yes, great, that. (laughs) Hawk Raven, Raven, I need your help. Uh, Yes. Would you mind... Reaching into my scabbard, not me, but the well, actually ah. me. That's so now the, in a the, horse. The 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 human or half orc chase has wandered over to the table and has like nosed a plate onto the floor and is just eating like last night's food. Just that's like right. not not using hands, just like literally just <laughs> eating with his face, oh. getting it all over him. Yeah. Uh, that reminds me of college. College me. <laughs> but Hawk Raven, I need something from you. I, I'm sure we'll get put back in our bodies at some point, maybe by the end of this episode. But until then, I need to make sure my sword is safe. Please, uh, reach into my scabbard and pull out chestnut. <laughs> Shing! It's this plus one striking bastard sword. Ooh. It's been with me ever since I was a boy. It's named after the first horse I killed. <laughs> and it's mostly made out of that self-same horse. That's why I call it Chestnut. <laughs> what do you want to do with it? Just want you to hold on to it so that horse me doesn't lose it. Well, um, no. I'm what? already encumbered. <laughs> <laughs> I so can't say afford, we all. I can't afford a single bulk. All right, then just tie it to my chassis. <laughs> my chassis? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm, I have not used, this body's new to me. I don't know what the, the body un, called. The Are, unscabbarded, extremely it's... sharp broadsword. He's just going to tie to your bare skin. <laughs> no, put it back in the scabbard and tie it to my flank. Are you an it's F1 at this one car? Time that we learned that Troy does not know what the parts of a horse are. <laughs> All right. Um, they have a chassis but of some sort. <laughs> That's what we All call right. it in the factory. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he will, he right. will tie your broadsword to your butt. Thank you. You're a good All right. Friend. So you managed to you managed to gather up all of your gear. Uh, uh, I'm assuming you're not leaving uh, human horse chase here. No, someone will drape him over me. Okay. Um, he looks really uh, confused no, Hawk by Raven. this, but <laughs> Hawk, Hawk Raven will ride him. <laughs> <laughs> Be, being small in stature. Like, mm. Well, I can't fly. So I might as well ride. Please don't <laughs> ride horse me. You can ride me. <laughs> don't degrade I, my body. I don't know what we're doing. All right. So <laughs> um, you managed to get yourselves uh, put together and head uh, out following the trail. Uh, the trail leads away from this small community just outside of Riddleport into the woods, uh, getting further and further away and deeper and deeper into the wilderness. Can somebody give me a survival check to see how well you follow the tracks? Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. 24 this time. Pretty good. A lot of single digits over here. 24 as well. Tonight. Well, a lot of single you, digits. You continue following the trail and uh, you eventually reach a point where um, it just comes to an end. It just suddenly stops. And it's at that point uh, where you're, you're there and you're just kind of looking around trying to find out where it went when, quite suddenly, your your crow uh, friend, Damaran, suddenly appears again, landing on the tree branch nearby. And he looks and he just goes, no, 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 this is all, this is all bad. This is really unfortunate. This is going to make Amunir quite upset. There are going to be crashes at the wedding and it's going to make my life miserable and it's all your fault what yeah you <sighs> you had to go and lose your bodies and now whoever's got them is going to show up at the anniversary because they've been invited yes we know that and we're we're on the trail we're wasting are you time. because it looks like it ends right here oh well, right. because well, whoever took them went through the first world they're gone well, God. they could here's be an idea. leagues from here by now. If you could wrangle us an invitation, we could be waiting for them at the party when our bodies arrive, and then we could do the switchback, arrest the people that did this, and then come to the party and everything will be great. 
I am very good at parties. There aren't any more invitations. That's not how this works. And he's, you know, this is a crow kind of lecturing you with a wing. (laughs) Uh, Jason, can I do a a quick look around for any uh, fungus that may be towards the trail's end? I'd like to use... Oh, go ahead. Yeah, there's some mushrooms nearby. Yeah. I'd like to use my new ancestral feet. Speak with Kindred. To inquire <laughs> as to why this trail ends and what they saw that may be missing. So he finds the nearest toad's tool and gets on his <laughs> belly in kind of an army crawl and starts whispering in its ear. What did you see, the, my friend? The toad's tool's like, hey, man, what's up? Hey, how are you doing? I don't know what this <laughs> voice is anymore. I, uh, I don't either, but I'm doing pretty good. How are you? I'm good. Uh, did you see anything, by the way, weird come by here? Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, uh, there were, there was a whole bunch of people came walking over here and, uh, they nearly stepped on me. Uh, but I see the, there's no more trail for people to walk. So where did they go? Oh, I don't know. Okay. They were here. Now they're not here. All right. That's how things go in the world of mushrooms. Yeah. I'm new to it myself. So, uh, great talking to you. Say hello to your mother <laughs> for me. Goodbye. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, nothing um, useful. Jamaran, um, how does d- one go into the first world to do the thing that you said we did? I don't know. I don't. I can't just open up a door. I can't do that. I think I know where they went. I mean, I can go there and maybe follow the trail, but I I can't bring you. Who who <laughs> even are you? He just kind of looks at you like, yeah, you're so uncouth. Tim, he's just a crow, okay? You shouldn't ask questions like that to a crow. <laughs> Go on, sir. I have an idea. I'll find out where they went. You go talk to Grumblebo. Grumble who? Who's Grumblebo? He's a friend of mine. He's, he's not too far away. He's maybe a mile away. I don't know. As far as, as, as I fly, I don't know. He's that way. Kind of points away. You can't miss him. He's huge. Grumblebo. Grumblebo. Sounds like a name we shouldn't say three times or something weird will happen. Something I... weird has already happened. Yes. Yeah, right. Did you say Grumblebo three times last night? <laughs> That's not how this works, by the way. Not everything the Fae does is, is with weird names and stuff. We're no, going to see this talk... Grumblebo, then. You should talk to Grumblebo. Get him on your side, and, and I'll come tell you where you need to go. Grumblebo can help you travel through trees. It's a thing. Oh. Good. Yes, oh, I've heard of yeah. this. Yes. Oh. All right, point us in the general direction. We'll find our way. He kind of wings in one direction. All right, I need to go try and find out where this trail went. And with that, he vanishes. Chase Goodbye, gallops Carl. with all speed in that direction. <laughs> <laughs> so so you, you, you go galloping off in that direction. The rest of the party uh, uh, follows suit. And you travel for about half an hour or so uh, before arriving at a large clearing. And, uh, you know, you've been at, you're in kind of a denser part of the woods uh, and um, you, you kind of had to make your way uh, in, into this area. But when you arrive there, you realize this must be the place because although the wood around you is old and ancient, what is before you is older and more ancient by far. Oh, cool. For in the center, there is a absolutely massive tree, um, oh. ancient and old. It uh, looms up before you, and as you enter the clearing, it kind of creaks with the wind slightly. And you can clearly make out what appears to be features in its gnarled bark. Uh, Hawkraven will approach uh, the tree cautiously, uh, but unarmed. And uh, um, just sort of slowly walk up to it and just look at it to, for movement. As you begin making your way closer up to it, uh, it sways slightly and you can hear it kind of creak and grumble. Grumble. And it kind of goes... Ground. Hmm. Gra- what was his name? Grumblebow. 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 <laughs> Grumblebow. Grumblebow? What? Uh, 
<sighs> sway slightly in the wind. A bunch of a bunch of leaves fall off, and a whole flock of birds take off out of its uh, upper bow and goes soaring off, terrified of the sudden noise that the ancient ancient treant has made. We, uh, my friends and I, come humbly uh, to ask for your aid. We must travel uh, with all haste through the first world. Uh, we must track down some folks who are going to be in a lot of legal trouble. I don't care. I'm out of ideas. Pop even turns around. <laughs> a friend of yours sent us to talk to you. I don't have friends. He told us you would you would help us. His name is Domerand. He considers you a friend, if nothing else. He's noisy and he squawks. He's no friend of mine. Huh. Can I, I uh, can I roll a knowledge <laughs> check uh, about the, these ants and see what I know about them? Yeah, that'd um, be a nature check. Nature check. Uh, all right, that is a twenty-three. Um, you don't know much. Um, they are, you know, uh, generally, you know, kind of uh, forest protectors, forest spirits. Um, yeah. they can grow to be an immense size, obviously, as as any large tree can. Um, and they tend not to want to have much to do with the dealings of, you know, lesser mortal creatures. Yeah. This one in particular looks like it's been here long enough that it doesn't want to really have anything to do with you. Right. Well, what's, what's Domaran's wife's name? The the queen. Amunir. We are also we are, we are acquaintances and honored guests of Her Majesty the Queen Amunir, and I'm sure that. She would look kindly upon your, your you if you were to help us. We saved her life. We saved her life, and her marriage. A queen? Oh, does she have a crown? And on that, he points up at his giant crown of you know leaves at the top of him. I don't care. Go away. Um, perhaps. Uh, uh, uh Arconis is going to step forward. Uh, but he does so with his, 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 like he's bowing down on the ground so close that his paws, the palms of his paws are almost like touching the ground as he just obsequiously walks up to the, to, uh, Grumblebrow and he says, oh, <laughs> great and powerful Grumblebrow, he with the finest crown in all of the woodlands. We beg of you, we poor creatures, simply place ourselves at your mercy and, and beg of you to help us, please. And I'm going to, I don't know if he counts as a noble, but if he does, I use society. But if he doesn't, I use diplomacy. Uh, yeah, either way. Uh, um, it's either what you tell me, Jace. Uh, we'll go with uh, we'll go with society. He counts as as tree nobility. <laughs> so he gets twenty. He gets a twenty two, and he's just trying to look like the most like shit eating. You know, oh, I'm so, oh, please, we beg of you in your wisdom. <laughs> Put one of your. You're so comments. noisy. Be quiet. Oh, and he kind of. Boy. He, he kind of swipes a hand, like, not at you, but just in your direction, which causes, like, a storm of leaves and twigs to come washing over you. And he's like, oh, yeah. so loud. You're Leave so very, me be. You're so very powerful. And we appreciate you for what you are. No. <laughs> Let me try to make an impression on him. I'm, that's kind of my jam. Oh, so I God. I <laughs> oh, great and powerful, Grumblebow. He, it won't a work. talking horse. <laughs> yes, and look at you, a talking tree. <laughs> what a crazy world we live in. Let me tell you a story, Grumblebow. It's one that may shake your leaves, <laughs> as they say. My as great grandfather they... started a small glue company, and you know what he did to make that glue? He chopped down trees. Perhaps your brothers and sisters, <laughs> uncles, aunts, cousins, <gasps> no. they turn that pulp into glue. 
But then my father came along and he said, no more. Shall we cut down these beautiful trees that lie in the Cunningham Arboretum? <laughs> we will instead murder every horse we see, far and wide, and use that. We'll have to kill many more to make the same amount of glue, but damn it, the Cunningham Arboretum shall stand for centuries to come. And I carry on my father's legacy, for I shall never cut down one of your people to make simple glue. I respect you. Your Thank friend, you. the crow that doesn't respect you, or that you don't respect, respects you as well. We would like your help. Give me a diplomacy check. All right. <laughs> good roll. Oh, good. Finally. Solid roll, plus 17 to Ooh. Diplo. Ooh. Diplo. 32. Ooh. Grumble, though, looks at you. How do you make glue out of trees? I don't think that's how that works, but I mean, I, mean, I appreciate it. Uh, I, he looks... What do you want? Like passage to the first world. I can send you between trees. That yes. is the limit of my magic, and it would get you away from me, and you're very noisy. Yes, we yes. will leave immediately. Be out of your hair. Now we just need the location. At that, appearing up, like, like popping out of one of the clusters of leaves is Domarin, who just kind of pops his Domarin. head out the front uh, of Grumblebow and is like, good news, everybody. I found out where you need to go. Bad news is, uh, I think your bodies might have been taken by Gloomgrin. Who? I'll tell you on the way. And he kind of whispers to uh, Grumblebow, and Grumblebow, get out of my leaves. And the roots, the roots of Grumblebow open, revealing kind of a dark passageway into his interior root structure. Oh, cool. That's amazing. Travel between my kin and be gone. You're far too noisy. Thank you. And on about. that, he has opened up a doorway for you to travel. Uh, I Hawk Raven walks in. That's great. <laughs> yeah. Horse bow. And then I trot in. Rat Pima scurries down into the tunnel. All I'm right. still obsequiously bowing. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. And Ecthelion, like rubs his cheeks against his bark. Says, Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> You travel through a, you, as you enter the root structure of this tree, all goes dark and swirling and there's a thrumming, as if the thrumming of nature itself were around you. And quite suddenly, almost as suddenly as it started, it suddenly retreats. And you find that you are emerging from underneath roots of a very different tree, very far away. The trees around here are almost entirely different. You must no longer be anywhere near Riddleport. And emerging from this, you see that not far away, there is a darkened cave. Hmm. Scattered around outside the entrance of this cave are bones all about the floor, Ooh. as if someone has tossed the remnants of their meal about. It should heal up. Yes. Oh, right. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> Um, I shall use hmm. battle medicine on myself. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I shall treat I... wounds. On Actually, you know, so it. to be honest, you had been traveling uh, through the forest for like, uh, like a few hours by the time, you know, you got to where you were going, and then you got to Grumblebow. So I kind of assumed that you were able to do medicine and get yourselves basically back up to full. I'm not too worried Beautiful. about it. It was okay, several great. hours. Cool. Um, what do so, we learn along the way? So upon arriving. Uh, obviously, your uh, your your good friend, uh, the crow, is here. Just make sure I got the token somewhere. Where is it? There he is. Um, he comes uh, and lands on a rock nearby, um, and looking out at the cavern, he says, "Ah, yes, I think you mentioned a top hat, striped." with greys. Did he have a big smile, this fellow? 
Yes. Oh, Agreed. most unfortunate. You you have run afoul Gloomgren, although I have no idea why he would take your bodies. Uh, it's most troublesome. He wants to go to your wife's party. Oh, he, he would not be the sort. He must be working for someone. I... I... I, this is known to be his lair, and I, I wouldn't surprise me if he is somewhere within, but be careful. He is most terrifying. Hmm. He is a boogeyman. Oh, no. What? A boogeyman. What? Oh, no, not the boogeyman. And Arthonis <laughs> is just super afraid. You've never seen him so afraid. Oh, <laughs> terrible. He'll destroy us and haunt us forever. Is that true? Is that what the boogeyman does? No, uh, he he lives off fear. He feeds off of it. It's gonna uh, be so terrible. Oh no! But they, but they have been known to steal bodies, and some of them possess strange magics. It is possible that it was he that took you, although I do not know why. The boogeyman oh, no is a choice. myth. Just something you tell no. kids to scare them. No, they dwell in the cities. Abadar's Book of City Building tells about it. The Boogeyman is real. Yes, it's in a chapter that's often not included, but it's there. Uh, how do you find well, it? Well, you, you have no time to waste. I suggest you try to find him. Oh, it will be terrible for us. Well, yes, we have no time. Let's put our heads together and figure this out. Who knows anything about boogeymen? Anything at all? Hmm. Uh, would that be nature? Nature? This would be a nature check, yeah. Oh, that's right. I know stuff about it. Uh, <laughs> actually, man, I'm telling you, single digits, every roll. That's a 24. <laughs> nice. Every roll, uh, 24 nature to see if I know um, anything. Uh, you've heard rumors of some mischievous and cruel fae. Um, there, you know, fae come in a lot of varieties, and some are definitely cruel and evil, living off the fear and terror of others. Boogeyman is one of those. Yeah. They're very powerful, but you don't know much else about them. Uh, it is this anniversary of yours. It is haunting us as well. The fae have tracked us down again. I'm afraid this one has poor plans in mind. I don't know you how to might, fight it. You might want some of these. And he kind of hops across the bones and kicks them aside. And there underneath, there are a bunch of dull gray uh, daggers. Hmm. Ooh. He definitely wouldn't want these around. No surprise they're out here. Huh. Grab one to my chin. Yeah. Can I <laughs> can I examine them? What are they? Uh, they are clearly cold iron daggers. Ah. 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 I happen to have some cold iron arrows. This may work. Ah, most fortuitous. Well, off you go. Good luck. Wait, I wait. have a cold iron pick. Can you make Ooh. a cold iron set of dentures? <laughs> <laughs> I can cold go iron in there on all. I'm a crow, not a dentist. Uh, um, Pima will take one of the, the cold iron daggers and uh, after looking at her minute, she'll put it in her mouth. All right. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I have I have cheek pouches as a rat rat folk and I uh, can store items smaller than one foot in them. So you're you're putting a dagger in your cheek pouch? Yeah, I'm assuming it's I'm, I fashion a, 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 a sheath. Yeah. I, I'm, yeah. I sheath it and I put it. it in my mouth. Hmm. There are kids watching, man. They'll never. <laughs> They'll never. I think they should put daggers in their mouth at home. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, don't try this at home unless you're a long snout of Soki. That is fair. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, so you've all uh, snatched up a dagger. Mm-hmm. You the the <laughs> mouth. Well, yeah. Except for yeah. I guess, I guess not all of you. <laughs> Hold it in your teeth. <laughs> yeah. Can I do some sort of? Can I do some sort of check to try to tie one to uh, Chase's hooves? Uh, you 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 could you could probably rig something like that up, but it would be one of those things where he had he would attack once with it, and then it would be Flop messed on. up, and he wouldn't be able to use it again. Worth it for that one hit. All sure. right, I have the power of Saren Rafe flowing through me and i can always <laughs> run away fast <laughs> tell you what i'll put it 
I'll strap it to your hind leg, so that way if you have to run away and make a quick exit, you can try to kick him with a hind leg and then push off. And you'll never <laughs> see it if we're involved in diplomacy. I can just pull it out quick from my hind leg. Yeah. Smart, Pima. Let's go. Let's All go. right. Well, you make your way toward the cave opening. Oh, wait. Before we do that, can I hold us up for a second? Yes. Um, yeah. I want uh, just one minute, please. And I just start gesturing and casting this spell. Um, and the spell that I cast is a new one called Vital Beacon. Um, it is super, super cool. It's going to last until tomorrow. And vitality radiates outward from Arconis Golden Scale, allowing others to supplicate and receive healing. Once per round, either I or an ally can use an interact action to supplicate and lay hands upon you to regain hit points. Each time the beacon heals someone, it decreases in strength. It restores 40, 10 hit points to the first creature, 48 hit points to the second, 46 to the third, and 44 hit points to the fourth, after which the spell ends. So That's basically, cool. I can either touch you or you can touch me, and it does four decreasingly powerful healing spells between cool now and spell. the beginning of tomorrow. <laughs> So we can rub Arconis for for uh, for yeah. a little help. Yeah. Or he so can the, rub you. The the cave ahead of you looks rather dark. Do any of you have light? I have dark no. vision. Dark I vision. Light. I have, I have vision. lost I've lost my lo my dark vision and I now have low light vision as a rat folk. Yeah, I can no. cast light. I have torches. Well if you yes. cast light if you cast light on someone, I'll have them emit light so that you can see in this place. I will cast light on the sword that is tied to Chase Cunningham's rump. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> on chestnut? Yes, chestnut. Yes. Chestnuts are now roasting. <laughs> she was a great light to me until I murdered her. All right. So your, uh, your horse token now emits light. Uh, okay, let's go in. All right. Yes. Well, begin making your your way into the caves. The uh, the the doorway is open. The uh, crow Dormeran Dormeran takes off. He uh, he flies off, taking wing, and uh, you hear him call, "Good luck!" as you make your way into the caves. Crow. I my, my pawn. What was that? I don't see my pawn. You I don't see, see your yours. your pony. My pony, I don't do, do, do the old Roll20 reboot. Yeah, so you got to do a reboot. Roll20 reboot scheme? Well, I follow. Yeah, I, I figured. I'll, 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 I'll have you move forward so that folks can see. Oh, perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Troy might down. work better on full 20. Am I right? <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh <boy. laughs> Yeah. You shut your feedback. <laughs> so um, I'm going to assume that your body is currently draped over your back so that when I'm not moving an extra token around everywhere. Um, yeah, exactly. So I'll just leave that token out there. Yeah, no, it's fine. Um, so, uh, yeah, you begin making your way into this cave, and it's this dark kind of dank cave structure off to your right. It looks like it dead ends in a kind of cobweb-infested corner. Uh, but uh, it does continue deeper and deeper on. So continue moving yourself in. Yeah, this dynamic lighting is awesome. Yeah, it looks really good. Yeah, it's great. I never use it because uh, looks like it takes hours <gasps> to do one room. It's actually really easy, to be honest. Yeah. Good to know. Ah, don't leave me behind, please. All right. Looks like there's a couple different ways we can go. We can move forward here to the north, or we can go down towards that broken bridge. Perhaps we can go to the broken bridge. And lay your body across it and walk on it. So, uh, as you make your way into this this large chamber, it is clear to you that somewhere in the deep recesses on the other side, there is some other way out. There is this broad, deep pool stretching across the middle of the chamber, um, and it doesn't look like there's an easy way for you to go around the edge of it without walking through the deep, murky water. Um, the, the southern uh, reach is filled with uh, uh, an overgrowth of mushrooms. Uh, the northern reach is, uh, is you know, crystallized and, and looks like it's covered in razor-sharp crystals. So it makes it look uh, rather difficult to get across, except for this bridge, which appears to be missing part of its span. Hmm. No, Pimo, we will not drape my body over there. It's too dangerous. Uh, okay. Um, 
Do you want to move? Oh, geez, it looks like if we go south, from what I can see, it, yeah, it you seems said it to, was blocked by mushrooms. Yeah, it's blocked. So, all right, <laughs> yes, it's across the rickety bridge. Good luck, Chase. All right, <laughs> I gallop and over. leap. L- literally, all of us can make it over. I gallop and leap. Oh wait, but you took the light. Yep. <laughs> you guys will be fine. I can't see shit. <laughs> hey, come on. <laughs> it's beautiful over here. I've never seen anything so glorious. <laughs> guys? Guys? <laughs> guys? So move yourself back to the bridge there. Um, you go uh, charging and give me an athletic check to jump the middle. I guess I have to do that, right? I thought I could just yep. flavor jump. Oh, you could just flavor jump. <laughs> you said athletics, right? Yeah, sure. Thank God. <laughs> Natural 20 for a oh. 36. Nice. Yeah, Beautiful horse jump over there. So uh, move your move yourself to the other side of the bridge there. <laughs> and as, as uh, he lands on the other side, the uh, bridge kind of bounces and, and hits the, the surface of the water. And as it does so, it kicks up this froth. And within seconds, the no. froth no. takes shape. No, no, oh, come no. On. no, 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 no. Oh, what is that? Oh, the froth, Ooh. Yeti. Oh. Ew. Okay. What are those things? What are when... those? What? Oh, that oh. art's amazing. That's, That's cool. Great. So quite suddenly, the surface of this pool has risen up against you. And at that, I'm going to need everyone to roll initiative oh, <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, it's, it's so cool amazing. would i would we would there i roll go. perception or athletic yeah. if i was getting ready to do the jump or um if you were in the middle of doing something athletic i'd let you roll athletics but in this case perception is probably the right call so would i get to roll uh, if you want all right sure. that will give me a pretty sweet niche um, 35 for Chase. Throw oh. it out there. Man. Nice, Chase. So Chase, has a, Chase has, a, has a 35. Anybody beat a 35? No? No. All right. Hawker no. has a 33. 33? I got a 25. Close behind. Uh, what did you say? 25? 25 for our bonus, yeah. Uh, let's see. Um, uh, Nero, what do you got? 20. What? 20. 20. I didn't notice there were two of them. Uh, Excellion, what do you got? Uh, 14. Ooh. I have yet to roll over an eight at any <laughs> point. Not good. <laughs> and last but not least, Pima, what do you got? Uh, 15. 15. Chase, you get to go first. All right. I'm thinking hoof attack, hoof attack, and then back up to let other people jump over the bridge. So uh, let's let's roll that out. See how it plays. Very good. Yeah, go ahead. All right. Hoof number one. Ugh, gross. Natty three for a 19. That's just barely going to miss. Oh, okay. All right. So uh, come on. Come on, Chase. There we go, 26. There you yeah. go. Yeah. 26, let's say one for 13 points of damage. Misses on the first one, comes back with the Ooh. other hoof. Uh, and then I will move away. <laughs> so that doesn't give me any more. Goodbye, guys. Uh, no, then, I will move. I mean, jeepers, I gotta. You know what? Uh, I'm not, I can't just stay right there. So I will, I'm gonna move back at least five feet. All right. Yeah, no problem. Uh, Hawk Raven, what do you got for me? Hawk Raven uh, is going to start with a check, a knowledge check. So, would it be nature for these things? Yes. Uh, okay, nature check uh, 24. Um, you are pretty sure these are like some form of water elemental. Such creatures are oftentimes summoned and bound by the Fae to do their bidding. Um, they're forces of elemental fury. Um, you you don't believe it has any uh, particular vulnerabilities uh, because it's made of water. Fire probably won't work too well on it. Uh, okay. Um, uh, Hawk Raven is going to then uh, hunt prey 
Uh, I'm going to okay. say he had his weapon out. He wasn't going to go into this cave without his weapon out. So uh, he's going to hunt prey uh, on yep. the one uh, that is closest to him and then Great. fire off two shots. Great. Go right so ahead. here we go. First shot. Natty 19. There you go. 34. Ooh, there you go. 34. Yeah! yeah. yeah. Oh, fuck, Raven. <laughs> oh, there we go. Oh, that's a good start. Oh, Jason. Ah! Three sevens on three D eight. <laughs> Man, uh, so that is forty six points of damage. Oh. Right. <laughs> uh, and then second that shot. Arrow, that arrow blasts a hole out of it. It is still, it is still there, but it is. It looks barely coherent. I love it. I can just see it in slow motion. Just this arrow, spoosh, cutting off. Huge piece of water. Of it. It's the poor pony. <laughs> uh, and then the second shot, though, sails through the hole he blew in the first one. It, it was accurate, but it happened to miss. It happened yeah. to miss. Tight, tight grouping in this case. Too tight. <laughs> yes, right. too tight. Uh, Excellent. Oh, nope, uh, sorry. Nope. That's elemental. Oh. <laughs> Uh, All right. Much worse. The, much the worse. Elemental that's just, that's is just me. To, <laughs> the elemental is going to attempt to uh, hit uh, Chase with a wave. Here comes the first one. Armor no. class 32. Yes, that's a hit. Take 14 points of damage. Oh, it, God. It will then pull you uh, into the water. No, horses can't swim. Oh, no. And then it will hit you or attempt to hit you again. Uh, That's going to miss, though. Um, Someone help! <laughs> what the hell am I going to do? Oh. T- Tengu's going to pull a pony out of, out of the water? Just a pony. Pony with so, a, uh, I'm all it, legs! It's going to finish its turn by doing that. The other one is going to move uh, up to this point here, still in the water, and is going to uh, attempt to Slam into Excellion. Oh, son of Eggnaw. Armor class 24. That is, that is, say, that's a miss. That is a miss. That's a miss. A A critical miss. We'll attempt one more swing. A critical miss. Oh, boy, I'm not going to have a good time hitting you. No, a 20 is definitely going to miss. All right. Uh, In that case, uh, my turn is over. Next up, Arconis. All right, so uh, Arconis Golden Scales is... Fair. You know how some gold dragons have those like little catfish beards at the end of their snouts? Yes. Uh, he takes his claws and he's like... Eh, and he's just kind of playing with the beard like he doesn't know what to do. He's sizing up the situation. And then all of a sudden the camera, like anime style, just shoots in on his hand. And you see there's this ring. And just as you notice, that the, the, right on the ring there's the head of a ram. It just goes... Bling! And he goes, oh, and he holds the hand out like this, and he concentrates three actions to shoot the ring of the ram at the uh, uh, elemental nearest him. And uh, that elemental needs to make a uh, saving throw. DC yes. DC 22 fortitude save. DC 22 fortitude save, and I'm going to make it by two. Okay, so you succeed. You can take half damage and are pushed half the distance. Uh, All right, so here's how much damage I do 10, 15, 17, 20, 25. So it takes what, uh, 12 points of damage. What's it? What's it? This one? Yeah, no, I'm sorry, I'm on the different screen. The one, yeah, yeah, that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So okay. I'm going to right into Chase, basically. But, All right. And it, it, it can push 15 feet, so. Oh, wow. Yeah. Beautiful. Uh, I think about half of 15 feet. Sorry, half of 15 feet. Uh, so it gets shoved over kind of into the corner there. Um, and, uh, oh, actually, sorry, you were up there. So it's going to get shoved this way. Uh, because we can get shoved the other way. Um, all right. So, uh, and it takes the damage, but it is still up. Uh, that is the end of Arconis' turn. Nero. Uh, Nero is going to stride directly adjacent to Ecthelion, formerly an orphan puncher, stand directly across from these two water elementals. He's specialist in fire damage 
those aren't useful to, to him right now, but he's going to unleash a lightning bolt with the remaining two actions and hope they don't right. get to attack him. What's uh, my DC? 25. Oh. The first one's going to take nothing. Okay. That's I score a 20. The second one is going to make it and will take half, but that is the one that is more damage. Okay, that's 36 points of damage, so 18 to the one that is halved. It collapses back into Whoa. the pool. Right. Beautiful. Oh. Beautiful. Beautiful. Okay. However, the other one looks untouched. That would be the end of Nero's turn. Pema. Pema is going to slide with a step onto the edge of, edge of the bridge uh, and take a swing, take a, you know, a strike out at the elemental. With, Very uh, good. Her uh, that is going to be a 27. A 27 cleanly hits. It is not a crit, but it does hit. Okay. Um, oh okay, that's going to be 27 points of damage. Ooh, 27 Ooh. points of damage. Um, It uh, takes that. A big blast of water goes flying off of it, but it is still standing. What else you got for me? Uh, I'm sorry. That's actually only 21. Sorry, I still have raging checks. Uh, Cheetah! Uh, and then second attack is going to be a 29 to hit. 29 will also hit. That's going to be 17 points of damage. Uh, your uh, two blows just knock huge curtains of water out of this thing, but it is still coherent and fighting. Uh, I believe that is the end of your action, or you still have one? That is the end of my turn. All right. Uh, Ecthelion. So Ecthelion thinks to himself, it's like, there was something I, I can't remember, some deep well of animosity that I used to draw from. <laughs> Drove me to excellence in combat. What was it? Something. I hated it. Ah, forget it. Yeah. You're pretty sure elementals don't have parents. <laughs> okay, yeah. Well, natural seven, 23. Uh, 23 will hit. Okay. Okay, good. Eight, eight whole points of damage. Eight? Okay. All right. Uh, swing as much as again. Natural five. 17 to hit. Not going to do it, no. Uh, third, uh, second action as much. Natural eight points of six. That will hit, yeah. And 13 points of damage. 13, all right. Um, you're, uh, you, you managed to knock more and more water out of this thing. It seems to almost be shrinking with each hit. However, it is still together. Chase, I we're back to you. Water. You're in the water. Uh, How deep is it? I have one more. Oh, oh, do you? I'm yeah. sorry. That's okay, you're reconnect. Out of me yeah. Reconnect, Skid. Oh. Just, yeah. <laughs> I can't even hear him. Yeah. <laughs> Such a bummer. Um, a little bit of a little bit of a tech hang up hello? here. Hold on, folks. Hello. There, there, you, go. Go. there you go. <laughs> okay. Uh, one more attack. Another natty eighteen for uh, twenty six. <laughs> Ten uh, more points of damage. You are just carving this thing up, but it is still standing. Now we are up to Chase. Um, Chase, you've been knocked into this brackish water. It is deep enough to require an athletics check to move around. Oh. You're a horse and have no idea how to swim as a horse. Oh, my well, God. No. <laughs> oh, Aaron Ray, what is that old adage? You can lead a horse to water, but you can't <laughs> make him sink. <laughs> oh, bottle cap. Uh, <laughs> Give me an athletics check. That guy rolled a 24. 24. No problem. No problem. You were able to get back up onto the bridge. Oh. <laughs> You are drenched and cold. Your hooves clattering on the bridge. <laughs> oh, Saturn Ray and the horse guards be praised. Uh, <laughs> how is this fight going? And he looks. There is but one of these elemental creatures left, and it looks badly wounded. Do you think your life will continue, water creature? I say nay. <laughs> oh, wow. wow. I mean, just lighten it up tonight, Troy. Just, just lighting <laughs> it, up, it yeah. up. And then he just, he I don't want to jump over the bridge and attack him, so he's just like, 
he like intimidates him. He stands up on two hooves and makes a big show. Give me an intimidate check. Okay. Bring it home in the final stretch here. I mean, how intimidating can a pony be? It's a pony. God. Twenty-one. Uh, <laughs> you know, you could be afraid of a horse or not. Hulk Raven, it's your turn. What do you got? Going to inspire the team. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Hawk Raven is going to stride over along the water's edge to get a cleaner shot at the target. Hunt right. prey, uh, aim it up, and then doof, doof, two fast arrows. First arrow comes out. No. 19 to hit. Oh, come on. Come on. Second arrow, 26 on the second arrow. Nice, yeah. there it is. Beauteous. Uh, oh, there we go. That's there. And then, uh, so that's 17 points of damage. And with that, the water collapses back down into the pool. Yeah! Yay! Yeah! We did it! <laughs> we did it, yeah, everybody! Right. Uh, just to keep things moving along here, you're able to uh, make your way through the uh, bridge here in this room. Uh, uh, yeah, there's a few checks needed to get over the water, but since there are no water elementals anymore, there's not really any danger. So if you'd like, you can continue moving your way further down into yes the following the light because I can't see otherwise uh, <laughs> the light of this. chestnut shall lead us <laughs> uh, lead the way chase she was a great Love horse this. she's an even better source as, as you make your way deeper into this cavern you reach old worked stone that looks like someone carved out this area. And up ahead, you see a bubbling cauldron. Oh, it's actually awesome. bubbling. That's cool. That's awesome. Never seen anything like that. Yeah, as it turns out, you can make gifts for roll 20. Uh, so, uh, in the back of this chamber, you see six forms. Oh. The five oh. forms of your bodies. <gasps> and the form oh. of the barkeep. Oh, so what? He also abducted. However, as you draw near this cauldron, rising up behind it is a man dressed in a gray pinstripe suit. And he rises up from the cauldron and he says, Welcome, my friends. I didn't ah. make your way here. Oh. Oh. And at that, folks, we are going to let the fine people from the uh, Gen Con channel uh, go for the night, and we are going to take this show over to uh, another channel, correct? Yeah. Yeah, we'll head over to twitch.tv slash the glass cannon, and we're going long! We're going long! Give us a few minutes to get swapped over to the other channel, and we will be up and running here in just a few. Thank you for watching, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Good night. Happy Gen Con. 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 Happ